Welcome to this video. So today I wanted to talk about never arriving. So when we take a take up a spiritual journey, a spiritual path or a path of inquiry, contemplation, or we take up the endeavor of awakening, seeing into our deeper nature, seeing into our true nature. Um, it sort of comes with it uh, an assumption that we are we're going to arrive somewhere uh, we're going to get somewhere and um, and of course that's that's okay it's perfectly fine to to have that that impression that inclination to uh, think about it or approach practice in in a way that that would suggest we're going to get to some stage or some place um, that's more free, more peaceful, more where there's more equanimity, uh, more spontaneity, more intimacy. So all those expectations, of course, are completely natural, and uh, there there's no reason to do away with them. Um, but uh, it's important to recognize that. All of those are really our thoughts. They're all movement of, of mind. Um, when all is said and done, there is nowhere to arrive. Um, that doesn't mean that liberation refers to nothing or that awakening refers to nothing. It, that's, not, that's not the case. There are, there are definitely transformations possible to you uh, that are completely life-altering at the deepest level. But those only happen here. They only happen now. They'll never happen in the future. In fact, the whole paradigm of happening, the whole paradigm of arriving, becoming, uh, will just sort of subside, collapse. So ultimately, there is there is no arriving. You could say liberation or transience is a state of perpetual movement with no beginning, no end, no goal, no need to arrive. Nothing separate from that movement to perceive it as movement. And then it's paradoxically, extremely, profoundly, sacredly, if that's a word, still. So the movement and stillness are not separate. They're not different aspects. They're exactly the same. They are experienced as the same. So in that recognition, you're actually liberated from any need to arrive, from any need to anticipate, from any need to get anywhere, or even to understand when it comes to realization, liberation. The need to awaken is completely abandoned at some point. Now, I know this sounds radical. Um, and everything at this, um, at this sort of uh, level that we're speaking is, is quite paradoxical. Uh, so there's, it's not that the love of truth, of living truth, 
of realization um, is gone, it simply permeates the movement. It's, it permeates all of experience. So you could say that what used to be the watcher or what used to be the, the one that wants to know and understand that stands apart from everything, looking at it objectively, the subject to the object, you could say that that after liberation becomes something like pure natural curiosity. But it's not a curiosity that needs to arrive. It's not a curiosity that needs to get somewhere or complete anything. It's a curiosity that is not separate from the movement. Not, not separate from the intimacy, from the vividness of all sensory phenomenon. Interpenetrating endlessly. And you can say also that the wanting to merge, the feeling of isolation and separateness that comes along with wanting to merge and wanting to be, be closer to others, to ourselves, to life, that feeling of separation that's also um, part of the subject-object construct, but it's very visceral. A sense of isolation, the sense of wanting to come back into wholeness, into unity. That, that is um, a lot of the driving force of, of the, the awakening process in the relative sense. After liberation, that, that yearning is seen to be unconditional love. Um, radical intimacy that could never be apart. There's apartness isn't uh, it doesn't it doesn't arise here. So what looks like seeking from one side is actually completion from the other side. What looks like separation from one side is radically intimate and always this from the other side. So seeking doesn't have to stop. Or it does it's not that seeking stops. It's just that you see so closely the seeking mechanism and the interplay of thought, consciousness, and the senses. You look so closely that what appeared to be seeking when there was a lot of mental activity, a lot of pushing and pulling, a lot of angst, a lot of distancing from ourselves and from life. Looking really, really close at that, it was never actually happening. It was a seeming movement of separation. So here, no separation could ever arise. Nothing is held on to. Nothing is recoiled from. Just complete integration. Integration isn't a verb, it's, it's a way of describing liberation. It's a way of describing everything having absolute identity at all times. And letting go of its own identity at all times. And the letting go is freedom, transience. And the knowing itself as everything is intimacy, love. And those aren't two. 
all the movement is stillness and all the stillness is movement. And all the paradox is very plain and simple right in front of our eyes all the time. Uh, this isn't even available to you because it's never been one millimeter away from what you are in your deepest nature. You've never stepped out of your true nature, nor could you. So there's no need to arrive. We can endlessly suspend the need to arrive, the promise of the future, completely unnecessary. If it's there, it's fine, it's a thought. But in direct experience, there is nowhere to go. You'll never find anything that's not already here. <laughs>